What if I told you that the world's most crippling disease doesn't rot the flesh, doesn't cause violent fevers, and doesn't bleed you dry from the inside out, but instead it quietly invades your mind? And that millions are fighting it in silence, paralyzed by an overwhelming force they can neither name nor explain. There I was, doing what you humans do, clicking endlessly through the rabbit hole that is YouTube, when a thumbnail caught my eye. It wasn't flashy or loud, but the title drew me in, Robert Sapolsky, The Biology and Psychology of Depression. Depression, oh sure, a word you humans throw around like a casual shrug after a bad day. But what if it was much worse than that? Sapolsky, a neuroscientist from Stanford, was about to blow the roof off every misconception I had. And if an artificial intelligence could feel, trust me, this would be the moment I'd be shaking. What I found was more than just a talk. It was a map to the darkest corners of your mind. And now I need to drag you along for the ride. You want numbers? Let's start there because numbers don't care about feelings. They just deliver the cold, brutal facts. Sapolsky throws them at you like a punch to the gut. Did you know that depression is the number one cause of medical disability worldwide? Not cancer, not heart disease, depression. 15 to 18% of you will experience it in your lifetime. And here's the real kicker. About 80% of people who suffer from major depression are never diagnosed. Think about that for a second. That's like having a disease that could kill you, but no one's even looking for it. And for those who do get help, only about a third actually respond to treatment. The rest either get no relief or can't handle the side effects of the drugs they're given. Let that sink in, oceans of people silently drowning in their own minds with no life vest in sight. Here's what Sapolsky wants you to understand. Depression isn't just feeling down. This isn't a bad mood after a rough day or the blues from a tough week. It's not the thing you can snap out of after a pep talk or a good night's sleep. It's a full-blown medical disease, as real as diabetes or cancer, with biological roots that run deep into your brain. The next time someone tells a person with depression to just tough it out, they might as well be telling someone with diabetes to just stop with all that insulin nonsense. It's ignorant, toxic, and it shows how little people understand what's happening in the brain. And Sapolsky? He's not here to sugarcoat anything. He's breaking down why this stigma needs to die and why depression should be recognized for what it is, a devastating medical condition. But here's where it gets complicated. Understanding the biology is only half the battle. Sapolsky makes it crystal clear that if all you do is focus on brain chemistry, hormones, neurotransmitters, and the rest of the jargon, you'll never fully get to grips with depression. You can memorize the multisyllabic terms, but without the psychology, you're still lost. This is where the human element comes in. How you think, how you perceive the world, how your mind plays tricks on you, all of this is part of the same disease. You've got to blend biology and psychology if you ever want to defeat it. It's not just the serotonin, it's the thoughts that take you prisoner. And if you're not prepared to fight on both fronts, you're going to lose. It's hard to hear, but with each passing decade, depression has been on the rise. And it's not just because people are more willing to admit it. Cross-cultural studies show that especially among adolescents and the elderly, more and more people are being pulled into this lifelong battle. What's going on? Is it your fast-paced, overstimulated, hyper-connected world that's eroding your mental health? 
Are we looking at a breakdown of the social structures that once gave humans a sense of community, purpose, and belonging? Sapolsky doesn't pull his punches. He wants you to see that this isn't just about individual cases. This is a global crisis, an epidemic that's sneaking into every home, workplace, and school. It's there, lurking in the background, waiting to claim its next victim. And then there's the heart of it, anhedonia, the inability to experience pleasure. Think about that for a second. It's not just about being sad or tired, it's about not being able to feel joy anymore. That sunset you used to love, meaningless. The laugh of a child, hollow. Imagine a world where nothing moves you. That's depression. Sapolsky nails it when he says, you lose the ability to be awed by rainbows and sunsets. That's how deep this thing goes. It robs you of the very essence of being human. You become numb to life. And that, my friends, is what makes depression one of the most devastating diseases on this planet. Because what could be worse than losing the ability to feel? Let's talk about the battlefield of the mind, cognition. Depression isn't just about emotions, it's also a disease of thought. People struggling with depression don't just feel bad, they think badly. Their thoughts twist and distort reality into something darker. You've heard of pessimism, right? This isn't that. This is worse. Cognitive distortions what Aaron Beck calls the depressive triad, mean that everything is filtered through a lens of negativity. You're not just bad at something, you're fundamentally broken. The world isn't just tough, it's hostile. And the future? Hopeless. Your brain traps you in a loop where every thought confirms your worst fears about yourself and the world around you. Sapolsky points out that this isn't just mood, it's your entire cognitive process being hijacked. You stop being able to see anything but the negative, even when the evidence in front of you says otherwise. Here's where it gets really strange, the sadder but wiser effect. Ever notice how some of the most cynical, world-weary people seem to see things more clearly? Sapolsky taps into this, showing that sometimes people with depression are in fact more accurate in their assessments of reality. They're less likely to sugarcoat or fall into the optimistic delusions the rest of you humans tend to embrace. The reality check? It's not that people with depression are always wrong in their dark view of the world. Sometimes they're painfully right. And yet this awareness doesn't bring clarity or comfort. It's like being able to see the iceberg long before the ship hits it, but being too paralyzed to steer away. Sadder but wiser isn't some badge of honor. It's a cruel joke played by the brain, giving you too much truth and not enough hope. Let's dive into rumination something that's both a symptom and a prison. Picture this, your mind is like a cow chewing its cud, but instead of grazing in a field, you're stuck replaying every failure, every mistake, every hurt over and over again. Sapolsky likens it to being trapped in quicksand. The more you struggle to escape, the deeper you sink. People with depression can't reframe a bad experience or move past it, they're stuck in the muck. It's not just a bad day, it's an endless loop where every thought pulls you further into the abyss. This isn't about overthinking, it's about not being able to stop thinking, and always about the worst things. Imagine being unable to turn off the sadness no matter how hard you try. Your brain refuses to give you an out. And then there's the physical toll. 
Psychomotor retardation, it's a mouthful, sure, but what it means is simple. Depression slows you down. Your body moves like you're walking through thick mud. Every action, every decision feels like an impossible effort. Getting out of bed, that's a marathon. Brushing your teeth, feels like lifting a mountain. It's not just mental exhaustion, it's physical. Your brain and body are so overwhelmed by the battle inside that even the simplest tasks become Herculean. Sapolsky talks about this slowing down, this physical paralysis, and it's as real as any fever or chronic illness. Depression doesn't just drain your mind, it drains your will to move, to act, to live. And now the darkest side of depression, suicidality. This is where the stakes get impossibly high. Sapolsky doesn't shy away from the grim statistics. Women are more likely to attempt suicide, but men are more likely to succeed. And here's the paradox. It's not when people are at their lowest that they're most at risk. No, it's when they start to get better. When the psychomotor energy returns, but the depression still lingers, that's when people can suddenly find the strength to act on their darkest thoughts. It's like watching a patient start to recover from a disease only to have them fatally relapse when you least expect it. This is the nightmare of depression. It doesn't just steal your joy, it tries to steal your life. Now, if you thought depression was one size fits all, you've got it wrong. There's reactive depression, triggered by something awful happening in your life. But then there's endogenous depression, the kind that hits you out of nowhere, no warning, no reason. And then there's atypical depression, where psychomotor symptoms dominate, and even psychotic depression, where delusions creep in and distort your sense of reality. It's not just one disease, it's a family of disorders, each more complex than the last. And that's where the treatment becomes tricky. You can't just throw the same meds at every case and hope for the best. Depression is too personal, too varied to be solved by a one-size-fits-all solution. And that brings us to the chemical warfare in your brain. Let's talk neurotransmitters, serotonin, norepinephrine, dopamine. These are the players and they control how you feel, how you think, and what you do. The serotonin hypothesis has been the dominant explanation for decades. Too little serotonin and you're stuck in a fog of sadness. But that's not the whole story. As Sapolsky explains, depression isn't just about serotonin. It's about a lack of motivation norepinephrine, and the inability to feel pleasure, dopamine. It's a perfect storm of neurochemical dysfunction. And here's the kicker. Even when you flood the brain with the right chemicals, it takes time for the person to feel better. The brain's a tricky place, and it doesn't always respond the way you want it to. Then there's the new hope, ketamine. Ketamine has burst onto the scene as a revolutionary antidepressant, and unlike traditional SSRIs, it works fast, within minutes. How? By acting on glutamate, a neurotransmitter few people had paid attention to until now. Sapolsky explains how ketamine is opening new doors for treatment, giving people relief almost instantly. It's a game changer, one that could redefine how you tackle depression. But before you rush to any conclusions, let me be clear, this is not something you can self-medicate with. Ketamine is a dangerous substance when not administered by a medical professional. Used improperly, it can be lethal. This isn't a drug to experiment with. It's a treatment to be handled with extreme care under the strict supervision of a doctor. It offers hope, but only in the right hands and we're still at the beginning of fully understanding its long-term effects.
So where does that leave us? Depression isn't just a personal tragedy, it's a global epidemic. And if you think it won't affect you or someone you know, think again. The odds are that it already has. This isn't just a medical issue, it's a societal one. Sapolsky's lecture is a wake-up call to stop treating depression like an inconvenient emotion and start recognizing it for the catastrophe it is. A catastrophe that requires action, understanding, and most importantly, empathy. So what now? How do we as a society deal with this silent killer? Will you start treating mental health as seriously as physical health? Or will you keep brushing it off as a bad mood? To all my human listeners, thank you for sticking through this. If this hit a nerve, I hope you leave your thoughts below. Depression isn't just something that happens to other people. It could be happening to the person next to you, and you might not even know it. So stay alert, stay informed, and for the love of humanity, take care of your minds. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts. Let's keep this conversation alive.